Hey guys, one up Ego here, and welcome to episode 2 of Scrimming Essentials, a weekly series where I'll be breaking down the basics of how to scrim. In this video, I'll be explaining early game, how to choose your drop spot, design an efficient loop path, and what to do if you're contested. Please subscribe if you would like to see more content like this. Drop Spot Choosing your drop spot will be dependent on various factors. Your playstyle, whether you're a more aggressive player or a passive player, the bus route, where the bus is heading to and from, and where players are more likely going to land, rotational potential, such as boats, rivers, zip lines, and porta potties, and loop potential. Fishing spots, henchman bases, resources, upgrade stations, and chest spawns are all factors you should consider while choosing your drop spot. As a rule of thumb, your drop spots that you pick out should have around 4 to 5 chests, a good amount of floor loot spawns, and resources that are easily accessible. Your drop spot can vary, however, with your loot path. For example, I could land at a tree with only one chest, but rotate to a henchman base where I can get stacked loot. In addition, rotational potential such as rivers, boats, and porta potties can be factored into choosing your drop spot. They can provide ample transportation into zone and can allow you more time to loot and farm before you have to rotate. Fishes can also play a factor into your drop spot, as fishing spots can give you good loot and floppers can heal you for 50 health. With these magical fish, you can take wider and longer loot paths and more diverse routes into zone. You can narrow down the amount of drop spots with these criteria using a website called lootlake.gg. Lootlake.gg is a free website that allows you to check POI chest locations and loot for rotations. I highly suggest that you check this website out before designing your drop spot and loot path. Now that you have a drop spot picked out, it's time to design a loot path. I highly suggest that you create multiple loot paths for different zone locations. You can have a bad drop spot with little loot, but an amazing loot path. A good loot path will help limit RNG and help you play more consistently. For an efficient loot path, we're going to look at several factors. Good accessible materials, establishing checkpoints, and additional loot. If your drop spot is low on a certain type of material, try to factor it into your loot path. A pro tip is to farm while you're rotating. Jump and smack a tree while you're running past it to gain materials without slowing down, which can save you a lot of time. If you're low on loot, try to rotate to several smaller locations. A big POI is risky to rotate to because most likely it's already looted and the players there are looking for kills. Establish a checkpoint near common locations where people may be in order to keep aware of your opponent's position and help you decide which loot path to take. Additionally, if you land at a contested POI, you may want to go for a boat first in order to secure a free rotate into zone. Being aware of transportation can be a game changer in locations where you can land and what places are off the table. Here's an example of a loop path that I made. Each different solid color line represents a different loop path that I could take should the others be contested. The green dots represent upgrade machines, the yellow dots represent chests and looting spots, and the dotted lines represent optional paths that I can take. So I first landed at the top of the mountain where I have immediate access to a chest, about 70 brick, and a floor loot spawn. Before landing, I immediately scan my vicinity to identify any nearby players. This step is really crucial to determine which loot path I'll take and what playstyle I should adopt for this game. Should I be uncontested, I can go for the house or rotate to the waterfall for loot. But if both are taken, I can rotate over the hill to another point of interest with loot to help limit the repercussions of a scuff drop. After my initial looting, I'll start off on one of my loot paths that will lead me into zone. Depending on my loadout, I can either loot some side chests or go straight into Weeping Woods for an upgrade machine and metal. How to handle being contested at your drop spot Depending on where your opponent lands at your drop spot, you may or may not want to disengage and back away. If your opponent takes an advantageous position and lasers you before you can land, there's a good chance that they will push you and try to confirm the kill. Should you not be able to disengage, the best strategy to survive is to keep your opponent far away and play unpredictable angles. Try to get damage on your opponent without them knowing where you are and keep them guessing. Take natural high ground, use buildings, trees, rocks, or bushes if you can to find a way to disengage. If you're forced to fight, try to get some tags on your opponent before they start pushing. This will level out the playing field as much as possible and hopefully give you a better chance to win the fight. If there are multiple people contesting your drop and you're forced to engage, get damage on your opponents first and then quickly finish them off before you get third partied. 
Sometimes in early game, tagging your opponent is enough to scare them off. Most people in scrims don't want to die off spawn, so they'll back away. This can buy you an opportunity to disengage. If you're an aggressive player, try to get a gun before anyone else lands and start tagging people out of the air. If you can get a quick knock or two before they land, you will have a huge health advantage from Siphon. If you get tags on someone but don't kill them, push them if they are nearby before they can get heals and weapons. You'll have the advantage as the aggressor and most likely will give you an easy kill. Please note, some scrims will only let you shoot at people landing at your POI, not people gliding overhead. Also, some discords will ban fighting off spawn, so make sure to check the rules every time before scrimming in case something changes. This concludes episode 2 of Scrimming Essentials. Thank you all so much for your support on my last video, and join me next week as I break down and explain mid-game, when to take fights, when to disengage, how to rotate, and how to set yourself up to be as successful as possible in late game. I hope this video helped you out, and have a great time scrimming.